Crawl Space is a horror film from 1986, executively produced by Charles Band and distributed under his short-lived but iconic company, Empire Pictures. It was written and directed by David Schmoller, the director behind a bucket full of cult horrors such as Tourist Trap and the original Puppet Master movie. Despite these credits, Crawl Space never matched the strong critical or audience appraisal of other Empire Pictures films. Well, honestly, it probably deserves that reputation. This curious tale of an evil landlord was both cursed by, yet prevails because of, its lead star, Klaus Kinski. Crawl space begins abruptly, launching straight into a genetic horror scene of a lone woman wondering where she shouldn't. Within minutes, she is dispatched by Kinski's disturbed character, Dr. Carl Gunther. The remaining 77 minutes detail how this creepy landlord ensnares and preys upon his house full of pretty young tenants. From regularly scheduled spying from the vents, to full-blown bloody murder. That is essentially all the plot there is. But Kinski's villain is given a whole chunk of attributes and accessories to work with to give the story some meat. So, not only is he a deranged landlord who spends most of his day chilling out in air vents, he is also the son of an infamous Nazi surgeon. He himself then adopted a passion for euthanasia as a doctor in Buenos Aires which developed into a twisted obsession with killing and death, which he constantly muses about in a diary. Gunther also likes to tease and torture his victims. He makes a distinct tapping noise to alarm, unsettle and lure the tenants to their doom. Like every creep, he also owns a shit load of rats to act as both an excuse for the tapping noises while also deploying them into their rooms through strange gadgetry. Oh no, his knack for gadgets does not end there as he has also designed many death traps to catch any unwanted intruders, including, most notably, a spiky chair. Is that enough? No? You want more? Well, okay. He also keeps one unfortunate soul in a cage, so he has somebody to talk to. But naturally, he's cut out their tongue, so he can't actually talk to them. But he keeps it in a jar with other select pickled body parts. After every kill, he sets himself down in a room featuring the black and white checkered square tile set I always used on The Sims, and plays a game of Russian roulette. After every false fire, he declares, so be it, like some nifty Shakespearean catchphrase. So be it. And well, most notably of all, the man has a killer dress sense, from mental cardigans to smudged makeup and an SS outfit. And again, he delivers that usual Klaus Kinski intensity. So really, the writer could have done away with all of this detail, and the character would be just as menacing. It's a shame, really. A lot of these concepts are rather interesting, and when they're all mashed together like this, it certainly grabs my attention. But the film itself is admittedly guilty of the cheesy, sleazy side of late 80s horror. Creep. I can see a superior version of the film in my mind. A version where the film does not begin with that opening murder, but with the arrival of the new tenant meeting the odd but seemingly decent landlord, and the reveals of Kinski's truly demented antagonist are dropped in piecemeal. I imagine a version where more of the kills occur on screen, and an ending which delivers the built-up payoff a bit less clunkily. Perhaps it could also make more use of the sequence where our final girl is chased through the titular crawl space, which is a genuinely, hauntingly, claustrophobic scenario. The fact of the matter is that the production was hindered from day one by the film's star attraction. While the original script was amended from the tale of a disillusioned Vietnam vet to a Nazi's son under the promise of Kinski's involvement, the German actor's notorious reputation preceded him indeed. This is what has, makes me allergic to directors. You know, like telling me how to die. I said, Dude, where are you? Were you, were you already dead? Okay, then get that first and come back and tell me if you know it, you know? It's a shit. Within the first three days of shooting, 
Klaus initiated six separate fistfights with the crew, and seemed deadly intent on butchering the shooting schedule as much as possible. Band and the financiers refused to fire Kitsky, as his name recognition was just too great to lose. So, the actor remained, but he unfortunately overheard these stories. So he began to double down on his devilish diva routine. Much to the growing dismay of the director and the crew, Kinski refused to adhere to on-set things such as action and cut. And action. And there was this scream. I look over and see Mr. Kinski with his head between his hands, screaming, action, action, action. I've made over 200 movies and directors are always saying action. Instead, he insisted that cameras remain rolling, but he would begin and conclude acting only when he was ready. Action. Other times he just refused to say his lines at all, which certainly explains some of the film's problems. All this and more is documented in the 1999 short film by Cruel Spaces director David Schmoller, titled Please Kill Mr. Kinski which refers to the claims that producer Roberto Bessi was ready to have the actor murdered to end their squabbles and cash in on the insurance. It's a decent short film in itself, with behind the scenes and archival footage of Kitsky, and wonderfully comical delivery and editing by Schmoller. This short film, along with Herzog's documentary My Best Fiend, as well as all the other stories over the years, paint a portrait of a very volatile, difficult and elegant man. The disturbing claims from his daughters since his death unfortunately turned such tales from the amusingly absurd to the sickening. His autobiography, Kinski and Cut, is an interesting read to say the least, and it's impossible to know if I recommend it or not. Outlandish and depraved and unbelievable. Reading it, you can however absolutely believe every single word ever spoken about the man. Uh, yes, dear. Überlegen Sie, darf ich Ihre Frau inzwischen was fragen, Madame? Ja, Sie müssen mich da noch unterbrechen, wenn Sie mich fragen. Wollen Sie, dass ich Ihnen antworte oder nicht? Was heißt überlegen, wenn ich blöd? Ich will Ihnen antworten auf Ihre Fragen. Ich finde, dass Ihre Fragen ziemlich sinnlos sind, nicht meine Antworten. Verstehen Sie? Sie können das auch genauso senden, wie ich es jetzt im Augenblick sage. Ich bin nicht einverstanden. Ich meine, also dann lassen Sie mich ausreden, sonst fragen Sie mich gar nicht. Jetzt gehe ich nach Hause, nicht? Ja, bitte. Das Wort gehört Ihnen. But, as the director laments at the end of Please Kill Mr. Kinski, that very inbuilt intensity created decades of admittedly fascinating, if troubled, art. <laughs>